Hello and welcome. My name is Mara Quinas, the Education Coordinator with the Finger Lakes Alzheimer's Caregiver Institute at Lifespan. We're excited to be offering these virtual webinars at this time for folks. So here's the pre-recorded option for our first webinar, Creating a Routine in the Time of COVID-19, a Caregiver's Guide. And we're lucky to be joined by Cindy Steltz, the Director of Education at Lifespan, who also oversees the Caregiver Resource Center in Monroe County at Lifespan and who is full of wonderful knowledge and information and expertise and we're really lucky to have her today. So without further ado, Cindy Seltz. Welcome. We're so glad that you chose to join us. We know that your time is um, sometimes crunched and over the next few weeks we'll be sharing great information with you about taking care of yourself during this time of unprecedented um, disruption. Today we're gonna to talk about the importance of setting a routine. And I know for many of you right now, creating a routine may seem somewhat overwhelming, but there are some good reasons to do this. Next slide. So why are routines important? First of all, routines can be calming. Uh, one big cause of stress for all of us is when we have to make a lot of decisions and routines can help us cut down on the number of decisions that we need to make. Routines can also help care receivers or care partners feel more secure, especially those with dementia. Routines can serve as reminders of the ways we can care for ourselves. Sometimes if we don't pay attention to that, we let our self-care go. If it's on our routine, um, it's a little easier to make sure that we take care of ourselves. They also create a sense of continuity and consistency, which is really important when things are unpredictable. In a few moments, we'll be reviewing items to think about when making routines for yourself. But keep in mind that routines are one thing we can control. They are anchors to offset the unpredictable and stressful aspects of life right now. Next slide. So one of the first things that you want to look at in terms of routine is having a similar time each day when you wake up or go to bed. Now many of us have trouble falling asleep at night or staying asleep at night. Um, we may be having disrupted sleep because of the needs of our care receiver or other things going on. So here are some tips. If you have trouble sleeping at night, limit your watching of intense dramas or media reports about the crisis before bedtime. Shut down all your technology. There's research to show that using your iPad or your iPhone right before bedtime can disrupt your sleep. Have a bedtime routine that tells your body to start getting ready for sleep. Some people find it helpful to do a warm bath or shower, maybe some light stretching, um, lower the lighting in the rooms that they're in, maybe have a small snack or some warm milk. And then for many of us, reducing caffeine in the afternoon or evening can be helpful, including the caffeine that's in chocolate, which some of us are very prone to want late in the day. Keep your bedroom only for sleep and sex. No stacks of paper to be gone through or laundry to be folded. Try to reduce the light in your bedroom, either with shades or um, curtains. And keep it at a comfortable temperature, um, neither too cold nor too, too hot. Some people are really bothered by noise at night. Um, using a fan or some other type of white noise or earplugs can be helpful. If you're really finding it difficult to get up in the morning, don't try going to bed a lot earlier. Try to ease your body into a new routine by going to bed 15 minutes earlier each night. Once you wake up without an alarm, you've found an appropriate amount of sleep for yourself. Next slide. Have a wake up routine. Uh, many of us are not uh, early birds, we're more night owls, but if it's possible, try to get up before your care receiver, care partner, get your face washed, your teeth brushed, get dressed, stretch a little bit, maybe even fix your own breakfast. Give yourself some private quiet time before the needs of your caregiver um, need to be addressed. Next slide. 
So modifying your approach to personal care. Uh, many care receivers are not early birds. Um, maybe they're more of a night owl and trying to do personal care first thing in the morning is distressing to them. They may be resistant. Um, maybe do their personal care or shower later in the day when they're a little more um, amenable to it. If your care partner is resistant, um, try to figure out what they tolerate best. And some caregivers have found it helpful to actually pair activities. So while their care receiver is distracted with one thing, pair it with something else they resist. For example, if they don't enjoy having their hair combed, do it while they're watching a program that they like or they're involved in another activity that's distracting to them. Next slide. We all try to be conscious of planning nutritious and easy meals. Uh, we're going to encourage you during this time to make it as simple as possible for yourself. This is not the time to feel that you need to cook gourmet meals unless that's something that you enjoy doing. Um, use uh, pre-prepared meals, frozen meals that you have um, available. Cook double when you feel like it and freeze half. Or if people offer to do something to help you, have them send a meal in. Uh, make use of snack packs, um, the little dried fruit packs or granola bars, anything that's convenient um, for you and your care receiver to use. And then also the option of safe no contact takeout or delivery of meals can be helpful. We also try to aim for a well-rounded nutritious diet. We're going to encourage you during this time to think of it over the course of the week, not necessarily each day. Um, keep healthy snacks on hand, along with meal supplements like Boost or Ensure. And if small meals or snacks can be used, that can make meal times more um, easy for everyone. Um, people's blood sugar doesn't drop, and it also means that you're not feeling like you have to fix a large meal at any point during the day. Next slide. Staying hydrated. Uh, we often forget to drink water, that is, and um, it's really important that we have at least some water every hour to stay hydrated. When we get dehydrated, we're often um, victims of fatigue, headaches, constipation, urinary tract infections, and other health issues. And this can be especially important for people with dementia who may not feel thirsty, so you need to encourage that partner to drink water um, when you do. It's also important to remember that caffeinated drinks can actually um, dehydrate us, so try to keep those to a minimum. And try to keep your intake of sugary or artificially sweetened beverages to a minimum. One trick that many people find helpful is if they're wanting something that's carbonated, is to mix fruit juice with um, sparkling water. It's a good substitute for sodas. Next slide. Move your body. Uh, we're supposed to be um, staying inside for the most part, but it's really important that we get some fresh air, that we get out for a walk, that we do some stretching. And there are a lot of ways to move physically, even staying distant from others. Um, if any of you have used YouTube, there are many stretching or mild motion exercise programs available on, on the internet, either through YouTube or other sites. Even just moving to your favorite music, you don't have to know how to dance. You can just um, put on some music that you like, do this even with your care partner, move around the house. Um, we have one woman who laid out how many steps it took her to walk around her apartment and uh, is doing uh, so many minutes a day of walking within her apartment. So there are a lot of creative ways to get yourself moving. Next slide. Breathing and relaxing. If you really think about it, sometimes we find that we breathe very shallowly and um, we don't get a lot of oxygen to our brain and our body when we do that. So reminding yourself as part of your routine to take several deep breaths every once in a while can be very helpful. 
Massage is another way. And um, even though we can't get out to get a massage right now, one simple technique is just doing hand massage for your care receiver. And they may even be able to do it back for you, just using some lotion and taking time to rub it in well on someone's hands. You can even do some massage while you're doing your 20 second hand washing, just making sure you have warm water and a, a soothing soap. Um, can be relaxing in itself. Relaxation sometimes takes practice. Some of us are not very adept at, at automatically relaxing. In fact, when someone tells us to relax, sometimes it makes us stressed. So be patient with yourself. And if at first you find your mind wandering or you're not able to relax, don't fret about it. Once you practice, it becomes second nature and can be helpful anytime you are tense or when you're having trouble falling asleep. And we've posted here a link for you to Powerful Tools for Caregivers, which is a six week series that we do um, often in the community. We're hoping to put it online, but right now you can go to this website and there's a free download of a progressive relaxation a muscle relaxation program that you can listen to anytime and just follow to help you learn to relax and practice doing it. Next slide. This is the thing that usually gets lost in our routine, doing something creative, fun, or stress relief releasing. Um, we encourage you to make a list of things that you enjoy doing or used to enjoy and in the weeks to come, we'll be talking about how to carve out even 10 or 15 minutes a day to pursue those activities. Look for activities where you experience flow, and that means you lose track of time. So maybe you're painting, or you're doing a crossword puzzle, or you're doing a jigsaw puzzle, or you're um, looking at um, creative ideas in a magazine, and you lose track of time. Those are good activities to help you relax. There are lots of resources available online. Um, YouTube has a number of short classes or funny videos to look at. And those are some things that you may even be able to share with your care receiver. We're also going to be sharing with you at the end of this session, a list of stress relieving activities and suggestions for you. Some things to keep in mind are that the stress relieving activities often involve doing something with your hands, doing something physical working on something creative, um, being able to laugh. So if you have funny videos that you enjoy watching, or maybe you're on Facebook and people are posting um, funny um, poems about the um, crisis, find some way to laugh each day. Someone has said laughing is like jogging on the inside. It's a good activity breath-wise, but also relaxation-wise. And then create a self-care plan and identify the activities that are stress relieving to you and they're going to be different for every person. Some people find doing jigsaw puzzles incredibly frustrating rather than relaxing. Next slide. Connecting with someone each day. Someone has said that this is a time of physical not social distancing. They really wish the term had been changed. People need people and we should make an effort every day to be in touch with someone outside our home. So whether you call or text, email, mail, or video chat with at least one other person besides those who live with you or you care for, it's really important to keep those social contacts alive. If your loved one is in a nursing home or uh, assisted living that you cannot visit with them, connect over the phone, send mail. Um, there've been a lot of videos online of families visiting through the window. Uh, so if that's a possibility, something to think about. And if you or your care partner would like a friendly visitor call, you can email Celia, one of our coworkers, and her email address is on this slide and we'll also be posting it at the end of um, the video. Or you can just call Lifespan at 244-8400. Okay, next slide. Keeping a gratitude list. Uh, practicing gratitude helps us focus on the present and not worry about the future. It has also been shown to change our brain chemistry. Um, it makes for more of our feel-good endorphins, 
and it creates new thought patterns in our brain. What we think about is what we dwell on and um, dwelling on gratitude rather than our worries can be very helpful. Try to write down three things you're grateful for each day. Now, some people are thinking to themselves, what in the world do I have to be grateful for right now? I love that some people are switching up the wording that they're not staying, um, they're not having to stay home, they're safe at home. And uh, I've seen many um, people post on Facebook how thankful they are that they have a roof over their heads, they have food, we have electricity, we have access to technology. You may have to start your gratitude with, list with, I'm just glad it's not worse than it is. And hopefully as you continue to write things down, other things that are positive will come to you. Next slide. So there are three tips to maintaining a routine. The first one is to make tasks small and doable. And we'll talk about this in just a moment. Keeping your routine flexible and being gentle with yourself. Next slide. Small and doable gets things done. We're gonna be doing a session soon on breaking tasks down to a manageable size. And we wanna encourage you that tiny steps lead to progress. Try to imagine what you could do confidently in 10 to 15 minutes and make that your goal. Now is not necessarily the time to tackle a big project. You want to set yourself up for success, not failure. Next slide. Keep your routine flexible. Um, a strict regimen where you really have everything down to the minute is a certain recipe for stress. Use a loose routine framework so that you have some um, space in there for things that crop up. Um, maybe someday you just need to change the routine around completely because something has happened. Don't beat up on yourself. Keep the routine flexible. And we'll be sharing a handout with you at the end um, with a schedule for you to fill in. I would do it in pencil, live with it for a few days, make adjustments, and then um, go from there. The next slide. Being gentle with yourself. Uh, most important is we're all learning as we go with this. None of us have lived through a time like this before. We're all going to make mistakes. We need to be gentle with ourselves and with other people. All of us are doing the best that we can. And remember that it's really okay to let go of some things. Um, we often sing the song from Frozen. If you have grandchildren, you're probably familiar with it about let it go, let it go, let it go. Next slide. Ask for help. Don't be afraid or ashamed to reach out for help. Caregiving is a challenge enough without a crisis being added to it. So identify friends, family, or neighbors who may be able or willing to help. Definitely feel free to call Lifespan. We have a lot of ways to help you. And in the outer counties, um, call your local office for aging or 211. Attend an online support group. There are many of them out there. Um, the Alzheimer's Association is going to be doing online support groups that you could join if you're caring for someone with dementia. Next slide. So in summary, um, here are some ways to create a good routine. Getting up at a similar time each day, going to bed at a similar time. If you're able, take care of your own personal care needs first. Modify your approach of personal care. Plan nutritious and easy meals, and the key is on easy. Stay hydrated. Take care of your body. Move a little bit each day. Do something fun, creative, and stress relieving to you. Connect with someone each day. Keep a gratitude list. Ask for help. Keep the routine flexible and make tasks small and doable, and be gentle with yourself. Next slide. So here are the handouts that we have available. And I'm gonna let Mara jump in and let you know how you can get, um, get these handouts, whether downloading them or having them emailed to you or mailed to you. So Mara? Yeah, so we have four handouts that Cindy had mentioned. The Daily Routine for Care Partners Worksheet, which is a front and back page. One side has 
suggestions of a possible routine. And uh, the other side is totally blank. It's in a PDF and it's fillable on both sides. So you can edit it on the computer or you can print it out. We also have a handout that all of our staff uh, edited and had ideas of ways to release stress. And we were inspired by the powerful tools for caregivers list. So you'll have that as well. We have an article that Cindy wrote, Keeping a Routine, which is fairly similar to the presentation she gave, but it's a good uh, written version to have as well. And then we have this PowerPoint that we're gonna share. So feel free to email me. Um, if we go to the next slide, you'll, or actually the second, the next one. One more, thank you. Um, the, my information is on here, email me. I'm happy to send you um, all of those documents. We're working on getting these up on our website so you can access it, but for now, if you can't find it easily on our website, please just shoot me an email and let me know what you need and I'll get it to you as soon as I can. Um, so the other thing we'll ask for folks is if you could complete the survey, um, and the link survey monkey is right here. So we'd really appreciate if you would fill that out and give us any feedback and suggestions for future topics. We'd love to see what would be helpful for you right now. Uh, do you mind going back to the previous slide? Uh, the other presentations we have coming up, uh, Tuesday, April 7th at 2 p.m. Kelly Allen, the Finger Lakes Caregiver Institute lead, lead care manager, and Sarah Buell, um, the intake specialist and care manager uh, here at Lifespan and the Finger Lakes Caregiver Institute are doing a presentation about emergency backup plans for family caregivers. We have Amira Banji doing self-care planning, a caregiver's guide on Thursday, April 9th. And then on April 17th, we have the Power of Music in Dementia Care with Liz Marsh, who's a music therapist. And then on April 24th, we have a presentation called Dealing with Uncertainty with Sue Crane, who is uh, another care manager at the Finger Lakes Caregiver Institute. She's also an educator with our team. And she has worked in two previous disasters. Um, she lived in New York City um, during the time of 9-11 and Hurricane Sandy and was very involved in relief efforts. So that um, will be another presentation we have. So if you're catching this video after it's already happened, uh, please feel free to email me or look on our website and we hope to have all these links up there for you and available to watch. So if you could go to the next slide. So if you all would like to contact myself or Cindy, feel free. There's our information. And again, thank you so much for tuning in and keep up the good work of caring for yourself and each other. Cindy, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.